quiet our hearts before God. Dear Lord, I just thank you so much for who you are and the way that you've made yourself present to each of us. I thank you for your goodness in every circumstance. I thank you for your presence, um, the unwavering um, love that you have for us, Lord. Help us to focus on you, God. Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us today as we worship you, as we listen to your word being spoken, and as we go out, Lord. Help us to to really focus, Lord, on you and not the circumstances around us. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So we have a variety of announcements today. Um, so the worship team fundraiser has been postponed. Um, so that is going to be February 16th. It was planned for today, um, following the service. So we all love David Evans cooking, okay? So don't miss out February 16th. Unlimited soup, salad, and breadsticks. So it sounds like Olive Garden, but it's going to be here instead. You don't have to drive to Williamsport. Um, so keep that in mind. Woo! Um, so a, we're asking a donation of adults, $8, children, 3 and under, $4. Um, so just keep that in mind. The Corner of Hope, which is the pregnancy center of Shemokin, um, we're having a little baby bottle blitz fundraiser effort. So for those who want to support this effort, there are bottles in the foyer to, for you to take. Um, we have some community outreach events coming up. March 6th, the soup place. Okay, join us in providing hot meal for the first Reformed Church on Chestnut Street in Sunbury. March 28th, Operation Hope. Join us in providing a free hot meal um, to the community. See Patty Reland for more information. If you're in here, Patty. Okay. Um, and then next week, next Sunday, January 26th, we're having our koinonia, koinonia meal, or the potluck. So please bring a dish to share. Um, come ready to enjoy being with each other and fellowshipping, because that's what the body of Christ is, right? We're meant to be with each other, encourage each other, build each other up. Um, so at this point, I'd like to welcome Ricky and Heather and their kids. So welcome. Woo! And then, Ricky, can you come up here and introduce your kids? Good morning, everyone. How are we doing? Good morning. Yes, so we are Californians, and we are experiencing Pennsylvania snow for the first time. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> The, the biggest learning curve for me is the driving. That's something that I really got to learn and got to get used to. So my name is Richie. This is my wife, Heather. This is our oldest, Elisha. Justice, Honor, Arrow, and Havila. We're looking forward to meeting all of you guys and just calling this our home and, and calling this our family. So thank you so much, and we'll see more of you guys as the days continue. So love you guys. And now I'm going to turn it over to Pastor. Amen. God's so good. All the time. Hallelujah. Yes, you're right. Praise God. Next Sunday, we're going to install Richie as the youth pastor, so please take note of that. And the meal afterwards, we're going to uh, certainly not only have that as a koinonia time, but also we're going to celebrate the fact that Richie and Heather and the children are here. Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. Praise God. All right, if you'll stand, Suzanne's going to share the word with us or lead us. In the yeah. I'm going to share it with you. You're going to join with me because we all need each other, which is what it's all about. It's a little long, but we'll get through it. It's Romans 12, 4 and 5. Join me. Just as there are many parts to our bodies, so it is with Christ's body. We are all part of it. And it takes every one of us to make it complete, for we each have different work to do. So we belong to each other, and each needs all the others. And I think Praise God. Good word. Can you say amen? amen? I'm excited this morning about the person of Jesus Christ. How about you? And also, I'm excited about our Heavenly Father. I'm excited about the Holy Spirit. 
And today we're going to welcome him because we know this, we want to worship in spirit and in truth. Can you say amen? amen. You know, he's going to do something in this service that will be really special. I hope that you're on the tiptoes of expectation as God wants to minister to us and through us for his glory. Amen. So I'm going to lead you in inviting the precious Spirit of God to get in now, dear Spirit of God. We come under your government. Come now. Save. Heal. Deliver. We welcome you. We welcome you. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Glory be to your name. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our worship team is going to lead us in worship here this morning. How many can say, I'm a worshiper? I'm a worshiper. All right. Can I get a mulligan on that, church? <laughs> I'm all thrown off. We don't have our drummer today. Hey, sing with him. He needs a little help. Sing with him. Sing with him. Let's just give the Lord some praise right now. God, we just love you this morning. Help us, Lord. Now I'm in the right key. <laughs> Darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken Let's sing that again when darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know Oh, I won't be shaken I won't be shaken Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. has a place to hide Oh, I am not a captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind Oh, I won't be shaken I won't be shaken Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance. When I stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance. When I stand in your love, well, there's power that can break off every chain. 
to walk in your love in Jesus' name. Praise you.
Try. 
As you wait for the crown, tell the world of the treasure you found. Bear your cross as you wait for the crown, tell the world of the treasure you found. One more time. Bear your cross as you wait for the crown, tell the world of the treasure you found. Isn't it good that when times are tough, we have someone to go to, amen? I, uh, I was watching a TV show this week, and, and there was a 
character on the show who had just this awesome best friend and and they could go to him with anything and, and on the show that's not real but they could just go to him and they were like so close and they had this awesome bond that that they could trust one another and and that's great if you have that you know and I don't know if everybody has that but I know one thing we might not have it here on earth but we have it in Jesus amen the Father's arms are open wide. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Yes, God. Praise you, God. Let us sing our free 
Come on together now. Jesus. Praise God. I enjoyed worship, didn't you? It was awesome. Thank God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I believe we have a word here, so. The word of God says to set your face like flint, straightforward, unbending, not looking side to side. The Lord says today that we need to refocus. We're getting sidetracked by the enemy, we're getting sidetracked by the pain, the things that have not happened. We're getting sidetracked, but everything that's not of the Lord. So the Lord says today, when you set your face like flint, you can keep your focus on me. The Lord has said, put on your marching shoes. You are getting marching orders. This is a new year. I know it's past the new year now. We're well into January, but he is saying, I'm giving you new things. You are going to go forward in new things. If you keep looking to what was always comfortable, you will never see what I have in store for you. So he's saying that each one of us, this is a year of excellence. And as we move forward into the year, he is going to bless you if you are willing to put on those marching shoes of obedience. Amen. Thank you. We've got one more, Dad. God loves us no matter what. He, we are special whatever we do. Good job. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. We have a special guest with us today, and we'll be taking the offering a little bit later, but we have a special guest with us today. And I'm thankful for Don Butler. He's with Gideon's International. I remember when I was just a, a boy in school, the Gideon's came in and handed out Bibles, and that was really neat. I never forgot that. And I was able to read that Bible. God is so good. Don's coming to share about this ministry, so will you welcome him at this time? Thank you, Pastor. Well, good morning. Wow, that thing's loud, isn't it? What an absolutely beautiful morning to be in the house of the Lord, praising our glorious Heavenly Father. Amen? And what an honor and a pleasure it is to be with you all this morning. First of all, what an honor and a pleasure just to be with you all this morning. This church is wonderful. But what an honor and a pleasure to be with you to share with you a little about Gideon's International this morning. 
I normally, when I get to a church, I always like to make sure I came to the right place. I do that by asking a couple of simple questions. Now, they are easy questions, but they do, however, require an answer. So here we go with the first questions. Do we have any Christians in the sanctuary this morning? If you're a Christian, raise your hand. Right now, everybody should reach for the heavens. We're proud to follow Jesus. Be proud to follow Jesus. Amen. All right. Second question is a little easier question. However, it does require an answer. Do we have any sinners in the sanctuary this morning? If you're a sinner, raise your hand. Right now, everybody should have a hand raised. Maybe not quite as high. But Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But Romans 8.1 says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Are we in Christ Jesus this morning? Raise your hand, you're in Christ Jesus. All right. We're in great company. I believe I've come to the right place. Well, as your pastor said, my name is Don Butler, and I'm pleased to tell you that I'm a Gideon. Now, I'm pleased to be a Gideon because Gideon's International is all about God's Word. And we know that God's Word generates life, creates faith, produces change, frightens the devil, causes miracles, heals. It just does so many things. I'm not even going to go through the whole list. But most of you know that Gideon's International is a men's ministry, and we're dedicated to evangelism and Bible distribution. There's less than 300,000 of us worldwide. We're the folks that place all those Bibles in the hotels and motels and hospitals and prisons on cruise ships and in beauty parlors, nursing homes, and in many other traffic lanes of life. We're credited with having distributed over 2 billion Bibles in over 200 countries and 111, 107 languages throughout the world. The primary mission of a Gideon is to bring the lost to Jesus Christ. We do that by placing the precious Word of God into the hands and hearts of peoples everywhere. Right now in third world countries, in small villages, there are men, there are women, there are children, and they're holding one of these. It is their most valued and treasured possession. And not so much because it may be their only possession, but because it contains the precious written Word of God. You know, it took Gideon's 20 years to distribute our first 1 million Bibles. 20 years. Now we're distributing a million Bibles every four days. Every four days, 1 million Bibles. That means, that means by next Monday, next Monday, one week from tomorrow, we will have distributed another 2 million Bibles. And when I say we, I do not mean we as Gideon's. I mean we, you and folks like you and your church and churches like yours that make everything we do possible. We couldn't do what we do without you. So on behalf of Gideon's International, from the bottom of my heart, I sincerely thank each and every one of you for the generous support that you've provided over all the years. And know that as an extension arm of your church and your ministry, every time we place one of these Bibles or one of these testaments, you are there. You have had a hand in it. And once again, I thank you all so much for the support that you have provided us for so many years. I'd like to share with you a story. This story is about a, a very lonely young woman who was in great despair. Her disparity was such that she felt there was only one way to escape that disparity. So one very cold, dark lonely night with a full bottle of pills in her purse she checked into a motel room she pulled that bottle of pills from her purse she placed it there in the nightstand now as she sat there on the edge of the bed staring at that bottle of pills contemplating the awful thing that she was about to do she happened to notice that Gideon placed Bible there in the nightstand so she pulled it out she opened it up and she started to read. Now, I would like to think that she was reading something like John 16, 33. In this world, you will have troubles, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. She continued to read. That moment, a life was spared, a soul was saved, and a life was changed forever. Because somewhere, somewhere there was a Gideon who cared enough to place that Bible in that motel room because somewhere there were folks just like you who cared enough to support Gideon so we could put that Bible in that motel room because somewhere there was a wonderful pastor like your pastor Jerry 
who took the time and effort to share the pulpit with the Gideon so that we could share with you what it is that we do. Now, again, I thank you. I can't thank you enough. I'd like to share with you another story. A story here, too, also about a young woman. But basically, it was about a, a handful of Gideons who went to, to do a Bible distribution at a high school. Now, they weren't allowed on the school property, so the Gideons took up places in every corner that surrounded that school in anticipation, waited for the bell to ring. When school left out, everybody who walked by any one of those corners and down those streets had the opportunity to receive a testament. They didn't know it, but at the time, just several blocks away, was a troubled young mother in great despair. And her spirity was such that with a loaded pistol, she walked into a closet and she closed the door behind her. She cried out, Oh God, if there's any reason why I should not do this thing, tell me now. At that moment, her young son come running through the front door, screaming, Mommy, Mommy, look what the man gave me. So anxious and unable to wait to show her the little Bible that he had just received down the street. A life spared, a soul saved, a family healed. Because of one little testament in the hands of a small boy in God's perfect timing, and a handful of Gideons willing to give of their time to distribute those Bibles. One more quick testimony. A young man by the name of Joplin Emerson was walking through the high school parking lot. And as I was walking through the parking lot, a Gideon walked up and handed him a Bible. Now, he was only 16 years old. He thought the same way a lot of other 16-year-olds think. Oh, I'll never read that. But he graciously accepted it. But see, Joplin desperately needed that Bible because even though he was only 16 years old, his life was already in a downward spiral. He was already into drugs and alcohol. By the time Joplin was a senior in high school, he was doing drugs before, during, and after class. One day, he actually OD'd in class. Came to in the nurse's office, had no idea how he had gotten there. Somehow, Joplin Emerson went on to graduate. But by the time Joplin Emerson was 20 years old, he was an alcoholic, he was a drug addict, he was a drug dealer, and he was a convicted criminal. And one night, he was lying on his bed, and he was thinking the same way an awful lot of other folks were thinking, maybe this world would be a lot better place without him. He was going to take his own life. Then the thought occurred to him. What if hell is real? Because if it is, surely that's where he would go. So he went to his closet. He pulled out the box there in the closet. He searched all through it till he found that Bible that had been handed to him four years prior by Gideon. He didn't know where to start reading the Bible. You see, his parents weren't Christian. His cousins weren't Christian. His friends weren't Christian. He had no Christian affiliation in his life. So he opened up the Matthew 1 and he started to read. Now, by the time he got to Matthew 7, 7, ask and you shall receive, seek, and then you will find, knock, and it will be open to you. He closed that Bible. He held it up, and he said, God, if you are real, and if this is true, I give you 30 days to show yourself to me. Remember, the alternative was he was going to take his own life. Now, Joplin knew that if he was going to actively seek God, he would have to attend church. So for the next two Sundays, he went to the church there where he was from in a small, small town there in Clearwater, Kansas. But the people there knew how he'd been living his life, and he wasn't well received. So he decided the next Sunday he could go to a church where no one knew him, knew how he'd been living his life. Now he showed up at the church, and he was wearing these baggy blue jeans that had letters going down the side. He was wearing a hoodie. He had hair down to his shoulders. He had a tongue piercing and ear piercing. And that's how he showed up at the church. But he went in, and he sat down, and he sat through the entire service. When the service was over, a little 72-year-old lady walked up to Joplin, looked him in the face, and said, Son, have you ever been here before? He said, No, ma'am, I haven't. She said, Well, will you come back? He said, Yes, ma'am, I will. 
that next Sunday. And by the way, it was exactly 30 days from the night he had made his covenant with the Lord. He showed up at church, and he was sitting there in the pews, and the pastor was on fire that day, just flowing with the Holy Spirit, and Chopin was taken in. He was receiving the Holy Spirit. He was in awe. That day, right there in those pews, he fell to his knees. He didn't know the prayer of salvation, but he fell to his knees and asked God to, to forgive him for his sins and asked Jesus to come into his heart and be his Lord and Savior. That morning, right there in those pews, Joplin Emerson turned away from drugs and alcohol, and he never looked back. Today, Joplin Emerson is in the full-time ministry. He's a pastor down in Clearwater, Kansas. Today, Joplin Emerson still carries that little testament that had handed to him, been handed to him by Gideon so many years ago. You see, only our God in heaven knows for sure how many lives have been spared, how many souls have been saved, how many families have been healed because it was a copy of God's precious word where it needed to be when it needed to be there. And that's why I'm a Gideon. And that's why I thank you so much for supporting who we are and what we do. It's all about God's word and getting those Bibles in the hands of people who need them. I thank you all so much for allowing me to share with you this morning. If you'd bow your heads, please. Oh, Lord, as the days pass and the years vanish, and we walk sightless among miracles, Lord, fill our eyes with seeing, our minds with knowing. Let there be moments when your presence like lightning illuminates the darkness in which we walk. Help us to see wherever we gaze that the bush burns unconsumed and that we, clay touched by God, will reach out in holiness and exclaim in wonder how filled with awe is this place. And we did not know it. Almighty, merciful, gracious, and glorious Heavenly Father, let your words fill our memories, rule our hearts, and guide our feet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And again, thank you all very much. I love your church. I knew I was going to love it when I stepped in here this morning. And I just thank you so much for having me here as a guest today. Again, thank you. Amen. Thank you, Don. Great job. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just want to say this. I have a conviction in my heart very strongly that someone was hearing what Don was sharing and it touched your heart in a special way. So I, I just encourage you strongly that you will obey what God is saying down deep inside of you before you leave here today. Amen. I'm going to ask the ushers to come. We're going to receive the offering this morning. We do have some prayer concerns. Um, Michelle Malacrinos needs healing for her pain in her neck. Let's believe God for her. Carol Dries is with us again today, and she still needs healing. We're just believing God for that. It was good to see Andrew Baker up at the altar here. Again, he went into the ER this week because of a problem with high blood pressure. He's been having problems with his heart. Let's believe God to heal him completely. Uh, Tim's back there, Tim Boyer, and uh, last Sunday he ended up in the ER. He came through that. He's doing better, but he still needs further healing, complete healing. Let's just believe God for that today. I know that Diane uh, has been in a lot of pain, and we need to lift her up in prayer and ask God to heal her. And then I'd like you to pray, if you would, for the Filer family, Lorraine Filer. How many remember Lorraine? She's with Jesus now, and uh, there'll be a funeral, and it'll be held over at Zwyer's this coming Thursday. At 10 a.m. will be the viewing, and then at 11 will be the funeral. I'll be officiating, so if you'd pray for that, I would really appreciate it. Let's stretch our hand in this direction in agreement as we believe God for these needs today. And one of these gentlemen's gonna ask God to Meet the needs. Thank you, gracious Heavenly Father, that we could come here once again and worship you, lift you up, praise you. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords. We honor you. We glorify you. Uh, you, you. You can meet all our needs according to your riches and glory. You know? 
Lord, we uh, thank you for that. We could all join together and lift up these needs. Uh, Carol, uh, Lorraine Fowler, family, touch them, every one of them. Lord, we would know Lorraine for a lot of years. She was a good lady. And Lord, we just lift that family up before you. We lift uh, Pastor Jerry up before you, which is not feeling well. And Lord, we uh, lift Carol up so that she could uh, make the right decisions on her hip replacement. Father God, we just love you. We we honor you and glorify you. Uh, you are uh, so good to us. And uh, being a new year, uh, we want to uh, bless you with everything you do for us. Uh, now, we, as we come to this offering, Lord, you you own it all. We you give us graciously, and we want to give a portion back uh, to honor you. It's, it said your word, given, given it shall be given. So we give and uh, we ask that you multiply it and use it for your glory. And uh, we ask your blessing upon the speaker this morning. And, and we give you all the glory in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Are you ready for more of the word this morning? Amen. Richard Gunn, our assistant pastor, is going to come and share what God has placed on his heart. And I know you're ready. I know you're ready today to receive even more. God wants to do something special. I just know there's a special moment here. I just feel that, brother. And Amen. So let's welcome him. Let's give the Lord Jesus a good hand clap of praise. Praise the Lord. If you would, stand to your feet. We'll get right into the Word of God. If you go ahead and bring up the first slide there, brother. Praise the Lord. Uh, being uh, 2 Samuel today, verse uh, chapter 9, verse 1, 2, and 3 is where we're going to bring the, the Word of God from or do our best. It's a, certainly a tremendous privilege to stand before you again. I count it such an honor, and uh, I'm the least of the least, but i got to do what the Lord or try to do what the Lord's called me to do, and it is a tremendous privilege to preach the Word of God. Uh, today, the, the, the thought or the word that we'd like to minister to your heart with that we hope that will mean something to everybody today. I often say if one of you gets something, it's worth every effort that the worship and praise team and the pastor and the staff has uh, worked so diligently to give us a great place to come to worship the Lord, to learn of the Lord. But today, a lot for each one of you individually to think about your life and where you're at and the journey. And I like to preach on the subject, the wound that brings life. Every one of us in here, sometime in our life, have been wounded. Whether it be a physical wound, whether it be a financial wound, or whether it will certainly be a spiritual wound and the question that we all have to ask individually with the wound that's in our life what do we do with that wound do we take that wound and let it bring life or do we take that wound and let it speak death to us amen so uh, ch uh, chapter 9 verse 1 I'm just going to read one scripture and get right into the word and David said is there yet any that is left in the house of Saul that I might show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? If you would stretch your hand, just wait and ask God to anoint me real good. Father God, as we come before you in Jesus' name, 
Jesus, we call upon your mighty name, your power. God, give us a year to hear what the Spirit is saying. Take my tongue now, God, and use it as a pen of a ready writer. God, I pray that you would help everybody here today, God. Each one of us individually, God, would examine our life, as Paul said, but let a man examine himself. Let us examine ourselves, God, and look to those things, God, that may have wounded us, Lord, and look to your word, God, on what we may need to do with those wounds. God, we ask you for the old-time, old-fashioned, Holy Ghost power of God to be present here today, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would just saturate this place, Lord. And God, most of all, if it be one here lost, let today be the day of salvation, that they may be born again. In Jesus' name, the church said really loud, amen. Praise the Lord. I give you the setting here of some people that we've all read about and studied about. But we find David, the king. David had been in kingship here for about 20 years. We know the life of David, and there's a lot to learn from David. But David is sitting in a place that he's thinking back again, and he remembered a time that he promised a man, a real good friend of his, Jonathan, that he would bless him because of all the things that Jonathan had done for him. There was a specific place that, that he had uh, offered up this promise. And David said, is there anybody left of the house of Saul? We know Saul was the king, the first king of Israel. We know that he had a son named Jonathan, and we know he had a son, a man that was crippled or a man had failed and he could not walk. The Bible says he was lame. As I've read and studied about Jonathan's son, it looked like that he was paralyzed in his feet. If you look at what happened to him as he fell, amen, he fell because a nurse had grabbed him and they was escaping because Saul and Jonathan had just been killed. And so she grabbed up this little boy, the grandson of the king, amen, and took him, amen, in fear. But along the way, this little feller fell and at the age of five was paralyzed. Now, he'd lived several years in this situation, and we find that he was down in a place, amen, of Lodabar, amen, a place of, of defeat. There, the Bible says, or, the, or the, the meaning of this word was no pastor, pastor to eat on, Amen. Anger, bitter, jealous, um, um, malice, a place of negative faith. So he was in this place, amen, with all this negativity. You and me today, church, because of the past um, things that we may have inherited, our family may be in a place, amen, they lived rough and tough, and now we find ourselves in a place, amen, of, of anger. We find ourselves in a place of strife. We find ourselves in a place of, of, of continual turn, amen, of something bad all the time. Again, negative faith. Um, but this, man, this little boy was down there, and he had no idea that there was a man that, that, that was now king of Israel still had something on his heart that he needed to fulfill, a promise that he had made to his real good friend Jonathan that happened to be, amen, his dad. Church, God has people in places all over planet Earth, amen, that are sitting in a place, amen, backed up and just waiting to bless that individual to bless that family, to do something for that family that may be impossible because of what, amen, God the Father sent his only begotten son. Amen, Jesus is in a position today, church, of all authority. He has all power in heaven and in earth. Amen, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Jesus is very much in control of everything today, church. It looks like the world, amen, it is gone, uh, amen, to hell in a handbasket. Things going wrong everywhere. But Jesus is in control, church. And Jesus is in a place today that he's looking to bless us. He's looking to save us. He's looking, amen, to deliver us. You may say, hey, whoa, Richard, you don't understand. This thing has got a hold of me. Amen. It won't let go of me. Amen. But church, those are the wounds that's in our life. Back a few years ago, 
the first major wound after being born again was when we lost our little girl, Kelly Nicole. The hardest thing I've ever been through in my life. That wound, amen, wounded my wife to, to such a place that Henri, amen, would even uh, uh, make negative statements to God Almighty. I grew up, we hadn't, we hadn't been born again yet, but I grew up in reverence and respect to Almighty God. They taught me his power, his unlimited power. I, they taught me vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. There's nothing for me to get even with, church. If God has vengeance, we better hope we, we, we ought to deal with each other real quick. The Bible says if you've got an odd against somebody, to go to that one. Hey, man, in church, we can solve 99 plus percent of, the, of, of everything if we just go to the Lord. Amen? But there's wounds in our life. The greatest wound that had ever struck me was the loss of my baby girl. In church, that's a, that's a tough thing. People say all the time, it's not meant for a kid to, or a child to die before a family or before a parent. Hey, man, we had, we had no, we'd never been there, me and Andrea. And a root of bitterness so easily got a hold of my wife and, and somewhat would, I would struggle with it. But you know, one night, church, that wound, <laughs> that wound that my wife had, that wound that I had, I had a little three-year-old girl, a Casey running around, and, and a three- or four-year-old running around there. And, but, but God took that wound. God took that tragedy that struck under in me, and that night, amen, as the minister that had never met us preached the message that night as if he knew word for word what happened in her in my life, the wound, amen, that brought life to her. I sat beside her in that little country church as the minister preached from heaven. And as that word grabbed the hold of her, I knew my wife, knew my wife good. I felt her tense up. I felt her resist the spirit of the Lord. I felt her, amen, but also I remember, amen, standing there or sitting there beside her. She had a hold of my hand as the preacher preached the word, and they was preaching about that wound. Amen, but uh, little did we know as he preached and delivered that message, that wound, amen, brought life everlasting to my wife and to my family. Praise the Lord. The wound that brings life, church. The wound, amen, that can, that can pay, take us to a higher height. I know one time under was, was she got a phone call from this little little young lady, hey amen, that, that got pregnant. And in uh, any way, uh, and Andre had talked to her because she, she had got pregnant and lost the baby. I believe the baby had been born and lived. And anyway, the baby had passed away. And Andre said, I've been there. Andre took the wound, amen, of, that, of the loss of that child and shared her testimony with this little, little gal on the phone. She hung up. Honor told me we really need to pray. I feel a heaviness on her. Hey, Amen. So we prayed, and we prayed for that little gal. We went on trusting the Lord. A few months later, Honor ran into her, and she was happy. And she told Honor, she said, what you don't know is was I was in the bathtub, I had everything staged. The water was halfway up in the bathtub. I had the razor blades all laying out. And I was ready to take my own life. But when you shared your testimony, when you told me that God gave you, amen, a peace of mind that your little girl, Kelly Nicole, is running through heaven right now, running up in streets of gold and looking at the walls of Jasper. Hey, there's no need for sun or moon in heaven because Jesus is the light of that city. When I got to thinking about my little uh, baby, amen, that had gone on to be with the Lord, amen, then I had something to live for. Church, we can take our wounds and the tragedies of our life, amen, and allow them to bring life to ourselves and, and let it uh, uh, spill over to everybody else. Church, the wounds that bring life, give the Lord a good hand clap. David had been wounded many times. If you look through the book of Psalms, as he wrote most of it, when you find the places that King David was in, 
under rocks and in caves and hiding and all the wounds that this man had been through and a lot of them were self-inflicted. <laughs> Most of them, amen, he got himself in the mess. How many of us have been there and did it? Praise the Lord, all of us. Hey, man, we look around one day and we go, oh, <laughs> you try to blame it on somebody else first, amen. And then you have to look at the man or woman in the mirror and say, what kind of mess have I got in? So David was very experienced, amen, with being wounded. And we find him looking back and saying, I'm going to bless Saul's family. How can I do that? And this servant of Saul said, there is a man left of the house, which is his grandson. I got his name down pretty good. Next slide, but I'm not going to mess it up. Uh, a lady one night after, after church, I, I guess I'd butchered her name. And she said, well, here's the right way to pronounce that. And I said, did that really bother you all the time I preached? And she said, well, it really did. So I, I picked, pulled my phone out, and, and you know, you, got, you, you can listen to it audibly. And I said, oh, well, I'm not sure which one of us is right or wrong. I guess the guy that's reading this is wrong because I'm saying it just like he did. Anyway, she called me a few months later and said she realized she was pronouncing it wrong. So I'm, not, I'm, just, call, I'm just saying today, Jonathan, hey, man, had a son here, and I know half of you or more of you in here probably could just roll it off the end of your tongue. I, I, I have a struggle with it. But, but we, we find here that he looked, and he was looking to bless the family. And church, the, the point of the story here is, is God has people in places today to bless us. I love it when I can help bless somebody. When I can just get offer a prayer, me and Andre was going to, down the road here, and and, and we we've not been as outgoing spiritually as where we grew up at, and I'm going by the red light down here in front of the the new place, uh, the tool place uh, uh, on the strip, yeah, and, and that little restaurant sitting there, and there was there's a man and woman sitting there, and God spoke to me to go pray for him. I said, Lord. <laughs> And then he said, right there's a red light. You can turn in and turn around. And as if God had built the place and God had put the red light for me. And Andre said, are you sure? And I said, uh, yeah. So I turned around with the red light and turned around, and there was no parking space. And, and, and she said, are you going to leave me in the street? And I said, well, somebody comes, move. But I, I, I jumped. I jumped out of the car and went down, and I said, I know this is maybe a little strange, but I felt really compelled to come and pray for you guys. Are you okay with doing that? Now, what triggered that? They were bowing their head over their food to pray. And for some reason, God pointed that out to me and told me my son and daughter needs prayer. Now, they promised me that we're going to come. I don't think I've saw them since we, since we prayed for them that day, but I have had a couple of correspondence back and forth with the gentleman since we prayed that day, and there was a tremendous need in their life. They have a wound. They have a situation that they can't overcome. But losing that little girl today, church, I can tell you I miss her. She's right between Casey and Chelsea. And for a long time, I sensed her presence with me. I look around and find a little shadow. You might say, I don't believe that. Well, I, I, I was sensing a shadow, amen, that, that stayed with me for a while. And then I think I grew enough in the Lord, and I'm still a babe. But I think I grew enough in the Lord that I don't sense her like I did at one time. My dad passed away, a good man of God. I sensed my dad with me for a while looking out for me. I saw him work clothes a few times, working on the building. Old song down south that the white and the black folks like to sing, working on a building, working on a building, working on Probably a lot of you all have heard that, working on a building for the Lord. But I saw my dad, or since my dad working, amen, getting things in order, amen, as one of God's angels. Angels, you know, as we know, come and go as the Lord sees fit for us. I'm glad angels encamped around about those who love him. And I, I know my dad loved the Lord, I know I love the Lord. So, you know, every, every time somebody goes to heaven, amen, there's just one more up there looking out for us. Praise the Lord. But what's your wound today, church? What's your wound? My, well, I wonder if you stand up just for a second. She hates it and I do this. But my, my wife, I'm, I'm so proud of my wife. She, she's been with me over 30 years. And, and, and if, if I could, if, amen, she deserves... <laughs> But, but if you all could see her spiritually, she's got a lot of wounds. 
I, I could tell you a lot of the wounds that I want, or they're, they're, they're personal between her and the Lord, but she's a, she's, a, she's a warrior for the Lord. And she's been through a lot of battles for the Lord, and she's still here on Sunday morning. And those two blessings that we got, it's about, it's about killing her. Amen. But those blessings that we got. And I'm proud of my wife. I'm proud she's standing for the Lord. As you know, Chelsea, Chelsea, please, if you don't stand up there, this is my youngest daughter, Chelsea. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of my baby girl because some of y'all know my testimony. You see, there, there was a shame in my life for me and my Andre and my daughter. But I can tell you today, church, stand behind this pulpit. I'm proud of my daughter. I'm proud where she's at today in the Lord. She has a heart to help pe outreach to people. She, she, she can talk to anybody. She's got a personality. She can help anybody. But she's wounded, church. She's, she's got a big wound in her life. She'll tell you she's not ashamed of it. Amen. Th that spirit got a hold of her and consumed her. Amen. The addiction, the drugs got a hold of her. She wasn't my baby girl no more. She wasn't thinking right no more. But church, God's come by her way. And as she continues on on, on her journey, amen, in May she, she will be, be clean over five years, right? Six years, amen. Praise the Lord. And, 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 and the difference between her and her mom there, it was tough on their relationship. But church, my point today, we all have wounds. If we can make those wounds, amen, that God has delivered us and God has helped us with, uh, and, and share those testimonies of what God can do for us. Next slide. I just want to point out to you here, amen, this little boy, has happened to him when he was five years old. It's years later, over 20 years later, and David is sitting thinking about a promise he had, and God is going to bless this little feller. And, and, and the man that he's going to bless him with had servants and, and had all kinds of things that, was, that David commanded him to go work the ground for him and, and harvest for him and, and gather up for him. David was very detailed in what he wanted him to do for him. Church, sometimes we just got to be patient. Those blessings are out there. I, I, I have a little gunner up here, you know, my little grandson. And I pray for him every day continually. When we bring him and Mackenzie up here, amen, with the flag ministry, and, 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 and bless her, she came over to me one day, and, and, and I thought the Spirit of the Lord was all over. But, you know, you never know uh, if she's just dancing for the Lord. But she comes over to me unprovoked for me and says, Hey, Poppy, I, I felt the Spirit today. Said it was all over me, praise the Lord. And church, all we can do is, is hope to raise those children in the ways of the Lord and trust when they're old they won't depart from it. Amen. And that's what's going to happen here. Amen. Even though he's a crippled, and even though he was down in a place of, of desperation, even though he was in a place of bad news. Amen. Do you live in a household bad news? I have. I used to un uh, uh, take my clothes off and lay them so I could just jump into my clothes and take off to go rescue, to go help. Amen. But I was expecting bad news. When you see people sometimes, you know there's going to be an argument. You know there's going to be a separation. You know there's going to be sharp words. You know that's wounds, church, that at some point in time, if we put our total trust in God and we look to Jesus as the author and the finisher of our faith, if we look to him to be the Alpha and the Omega, the way, the truth, and the life, as our brother already quoted, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be open. praise the Lord. We're walking by faith here in, in central Pennsylvania. We walked away from a ministry that looks a whole lot like this one. Amen. Walking by faith with, with, with nothing but a job. Praise the Lord. But even in that job, I'm responsible to be a light as a city to sit on a hill that cannot be hid. And a quiet, peaceable move of God is working through things. God is putting people and bringing people and putting them in all the right places, amen, very quietly, very delicately. Because, you know, one thing an old gentleman told me years ago, he's talking about the Spirit of God and how he worked. 
He said, always check yourself, Richard, with this checker. That's what he called it. He said, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God is a perfect gentleman. And as you're preaching and teaching and talking to people, no matter what kind of conflict it is, the Spirit of God is a perfect gentleman. He will handle everything with perfection. And I've often thought about that because I get into uh, discussions sometimes about different faith. I don't provoke them, but I'm not going to back down on what I know the truth is. And I always, and under my breath and in my spirit, say, Lord, I'm talking to somebody that don't even acknowledge Jesus to be the Son of God. He says his faith acknowledges Jesus to be a good man and that he really did exist. But they're still waiting on the Messiah. And I kid with him. I said, hey, I hope I'm in a place really high because every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that, that I get to a place that we're going up and I look over at you and I say, Adam! I told you, <laughs> praise the Lord, when Jesus splits the eastern side of the sky. But we have fun doing that, praise the Lord. What's your wound today, church? What situation have you been through? Man, divorces get messed, mess up a family bad, don't they? But you know there comes a time of peace in that divorce. I don't like divorces no, matter, no, no more than anybody else does in here. Praise the Lord. Uh, Andre's put up with me over 30 years, so I, I plan on, I hope, uh, Andre, right? She, she wasn't shaking her head yes, but we're, we're, we're planning on going to heaven together one day. Praise the Lord. But uh, I'm glad she shook her head because uh, she was giving me that look. It's a little dark out there, honey, so praise the Lord. I was just double checking. I love my wife. As you know, I love my wife. And God, God blessed me and my wife. But church, we got wounds in our life. That we, that we can relate to other people. See, I was in a place that I had no sympathy for somebody that would allow themselves to get consumed with drugs, alcohol. And I'm going like, why would they allow that? And then right in my household, with my precious baby girl, and me fighting every ounce of spiritual and physical fight I could, amen, to defend my family. And church, I have tremendous sympathy now. If you yourself or your children or, or your family members are fighting an addiction, please let us know. We're, we're going to take it on our heart, and we're going to pray. We're going to pray from heaven. There's one time I, I say, yeah, I'm going to pray for you. And I might say pray for that family. I might send a word up. But church, i got good news today. That wound that's in your life today, one of these days can be a blessing. One of these days will bring life to somebody. One of these days you can say, yeah, I know you're down, in the, down, down deep today. Yeah, I know you're down way down deep and this thing's got a hold of you. Hey, but I got good news. I, I got real good news. I, got, I know a man named Jesus, amen, that can deliver you from that. And they say, well, I want it, I want it right now. And that does happen sometimes. And then sometimes it, it's a gradual. I wish every one of them was instantaneously. I wish everything would just be fixed in our life. I wish there'd be a wand that Jesus would wave. But, you know, he ain't got no bag of tricks, church. He has healing in his wings. And God knows how to heal us to help us. God knows how to heal, amen, so we can take those wounds, amen, and bring life to our community and to our family. And David did that. Next slide. Real quickly, I'll close with this. First, uh, Second Timothy 1 and 7, and I live by these verses, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. And that, ha that, that, that really restrains a lot of people sometimes from coming to God, and it's, they're fearful. And now the beginning of knowledge is the fear of the Lord. But it's a respect for God, not a, f not a boogeyman fear of God. But he says God has not given us the spirit of fear. So no matter what's going on in your life, if you feel a call, Five-fold ministry I grew up in and was taught that, and I just thought it was everybody did it. And, man, it sort of went out. The church, the church needs it back really bad. So any, anything in here that you, that you know of that you're part of that five-fold ministry, and you say, but, Richard, you don't understand how bad I got, it don't matter. 
If you've had the blood of Jesus applied to your soul, if you've been born again, if you've asked God to forgive you, church, you're just as important as anybody else in, in the heavenly family of God. Amen? So don't allow fear to stop you from doing a great work of God. Now get counsel. Get help. Ask for help. If you don't know, ask. And church, that's the best thing you can do is lean on somebody. Talk to somebody. I had, I had a lunch the other day with, with, with Brother Tom over here. And I, I told Andre, uh, I said, I need to, need to eat and talk with him more. And then she said, where'd y'all eat? It was so expensive. And uh, I said, next time I'll get you a Big Mac. Is that okay? Praise the Lord. But per, church, there, there's warriors in this church that have been there and did it. It's my point. And if we need help from each other, we can. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. But here's where most of the battle is. Right here in our mind. Amen? I used to prophesy more than I do today where I come from. I, I don't know. I don't sit down on it. But there's a time and a season for everything. But I don't know what's a gift God's gave me that God will activate it at the right time and the right place. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. Uh, but church, if I allow fear to stop me, then I won't do the work for God. But I got to know what God gave me the power to do it. He's given me the love to do it. That's the key to anybody else's heart, is you got to let them know you love them. You got to let them know you love them. Amen? Husband, wife, you got to let your husband know you love them. Wife, you got to let you know you, you know, you, you, you got to let them know you love them. We got to let each other know we got to love them. You know, I preached a few months ago about fake news. That's the devil. He's out, he got all the bad news. Sons, look your daddy in the eye and say, Daddy, I love you. Not for what he's not done or what he's done for you, but by the love of God. Say, Daddy, I love you. Mama, I love you. Dad, Mom, I love you. And, and church, we got to let the past be the past. And move to the higher callings of God. Well, you say, Richard, it's impossible. Matthew says to us, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. No matter what you need in your life, church, it's possible through God. And if you look at Luke there and look at the parable that Jesus was talking about, and they didn't show up for the, for the, for the dinner that was put on, and he said, go out quickly into the highways and byways, into the streets, and compel them to come in. The main, the, the main, the, the, the halt, the withered, the people that were sick, the people that had no money, the people that were broke, the people that had nothing to give, and all we could do is give them. He said, go out into the streets and gather them up. Church, I work over in Sunbury every day. Wow. Man, what a harvest. There's a harvest field in Sunbury. There's a lot of people need help over there. I live in Sillings Grove. There's a lot of people in Sillings Grove that we can go help, church. There's communities there that I've, I've often wondered, and maybe we will, uh, you know, reach out to them as we as, as continue to reach. And, man, we're so glad to have the youth pastor here. That's, that's been a void in the emptiness of the church, and, we, and, and the church recognizes that, to have this man and his family here. We are privileged, amen. We are privileged, church, to have him here. And if all of us don't surround them with support and love, we, we'll be missing a major opportunity. Hey, man, I said, I'm, I'm sort of jealous of him. He's already got a youth uh, group already with five kids. And, 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 and Andre looked at me, and she said, but don't get no ideas. I praise the Lord. But, uh, but church, there's, there's a lot to do. But my, my request to you today is your Pacific wound. Ever what your wound is today, church, if we will allow God to help us and heal us, it will bring life to us and to other people that we live around. Amen? The wound that brings life. Everybody stand today. Praise the Lord. If you're here today, and most of all, you've not been born again, if you, can't, if you literally can't say that, you... Uh, <laughs> you it's such a peace when you look at yourself in the mirror. I've actually did this. I was challenged one night years ago to look myself in the mirror when I'm all alone and say, I'm born again. 
I knew the time, the place. If you've not been born again today, church, Jesus himself, as he was talking to Nicodemus, said you must be born again. You need to be born again. If you've not had that experience, it's the greatest thing that could ever happen in your life. And then as you get into the family of God, he wants to fill us with his spirit and with his power. And we can be filled with the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God can fill us. Everybody stretch your hand this way and let's pray for our good sister. Father, thou knowest the need here, Lord. By your stripes we are healed, Lord. By your stripes we are healed, Jesus. Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. We ask you to heal her today, God. Meet and supply this need according to your riches and glory, God. From the top of her head, God, to the soles of her feet, Lord Jesus, move today, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Anybody want to come up and pray today to be born again, to be freed from sin, to know your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Jesus himself records that into that wonderful Lamb's book of life. You must be born again. If you're here today and you say, man, I need the power. I need more knowledge. I need more wisdom. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God wants to baptize you, submerge you with his spirit and with his power. If you're here today and you want to be baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire, Today, the door is open wide, church. We all need to be filled and refilled and reignited. Our flame is burning bright. As we walk into a room outside, as pastor calls it, the marketplace, people are to sense there's something good about that man or woman, and that would be the Holy Ghost of God. The Holy Spirit of God can walk into a place and start convicting and helping people's lives. Jesus. Anybody want to be filled with the Spirit of God today? I certainly do. Would you pray? Everybody bow their heads, would you, please? It's just steps toward the kingdom of God. And I'm, I'm, my eyes are closed if you look up here. Is anybody here today that would say, I know in my own heart, Jesus, that, 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 that I'm working my way towards you, God, but here, here's my hand, Lord. I need help. Would you raise that hand to Jesus? Just raise that hand to Jesus. But Jesus, you know, for there's one or more here, the hands that are lifted, God, I pray you'd reach right down today, God. Touch their lives like they've never been touched before, Lord. You said, behold, all things become new. Speak to them, God. Give them the strength, the wisdom, knowledge, God. Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah. Anybody in their bodies, we'll just lift your hand. We'll pray for everybody's physical needs. Anybody got something wrong in their body today? You need God to heal. By his stripes, we are healed. Any pains, any sicknesses? Everybody that healthy? Wow, I'm glad, praise the Lord. I see some hands up. Need healing in their bodies. Would everybody pray in Jesus' name for this healing? Father, you see the hands, God, and you see the physical needs today, Lord. I pray you'd move right down into that pain, God, or and, and to the very cause of it today, Jesus. By your stripes we are healed, Lord. By the blood you shed, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, touch their bodies today. Let them leave here today, God. That virtue flowing from heaven, Lord. That same power as that little lady with the issue of blood retch out, God, and touch you, Jesus. Let their hands be that way to you today, Jesus. Reach out. Reach out, church, to touch Jesus. Touch the hem of his garment. Oh, God, thank you. Oh, mighty God, mighty God. In the name of Jesus. Anybody needs prayer? Their altars are open. And certainly the pastor and the elders of the church would anoint you. The Bible does say any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. We welcome anybody up to be prayed for and would enjoy doing it for you. So we're going to be praying for everybody, pastor. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Before you go, let me just say this. I felt this up on the platform. Maybe that person's up here and maybe they're not. But I felt in my spirit that God was trying to speak to somebody here 
and that this was a Kairos moment. That means this is a special moment where God wants to touch your life. So I'm going to just not try to prolong anything, but just say, will you come and let God work in your heart? The thing he put on my heart too is that sometimes we have father issues vertically because there's still a problem between us and our father. How many know that our first introduction to fatherhood isn't this way, it's this way. And when I dealt with women in women's uh, rehab of Teen Challenge, the greatest need they had was that they needed to understand that he wasn't like that, but they needed to get the healing in their heart so they could relate to him in a special way. So I don't want to prolong it. If you're out there, will you come in Jesus' name? All right, God bless you. Go in his joy. Go with the grace of God upon you. In Jesus' name, amen.